الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah the all compassionate the all merciful assalamu alaikum my dear brothers and sisters at the very beginning i would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us with the whole series that we are going to have together and help us to learn the language of Quran as much as possible and in the best way. My dear brothers and sisters, as an introduction to learning Arabic language, I would like to touch very briefly some of the very significant points. I'm sure you know that the Arabic language as a standard language is one of the most functional and popular language all over the world. According to some of the statistics, almost uh, 25 countries in the world are dealing with this, with this language. I mean that we have at least almost uh, 300 millions or 400 millions of people speaking in this language. Of course, the instructions, construct, instructors, and rulings of this language are different from other languages, from the, some of the popular, popular and common languages that we know, specifically from English. Sometimes the rulings are more specific and a little hard to learn. So learning language in Arabic requires a little more attention to apply and carry out the rulings of, these, of this language in the best way. For example, the constructions in Arabic according and regarding subject and predicate, noun and adjective, subject and verbs are totally different from other languages like, like English or even Farsi. For example, in Arabic, pointing to female or male nouns are very important. and it plays a very significant role in Arabic language. The type of letters, characters, pronunciations are totally different from English or other languages. For example, we have a very specific letter and character in Arabic which is called Dad. We almost do not have any other language in the world containing including such character except some of the very rare uh, languages in the world. Almost all of the languages they do not have such character the word, the, the letter Dad. And as a matter of fact, that, that is why the Arabic language is called as a second name, Lughatul Dad, which means the language of Dad. It is because of this special uh, character and letter that it includes. 
However, all of these uh, points and differences between Arabic and other languages that I mentioned very briefly do not necessarily mean that Arabic is a hard and complicated language. No. I would like to mention that the people who have learned one of the languages in the world as a second language, and I think most of you are like this, most of you might have learned another language rather than your mother language as a second one. Most of the people who have learned a second language, they would have and they must have uh, passed many obstacles and difficulties of learning a new language. Because the many of the obstacles and problems of learning a new, a new language are common among all languages. So, good news for you is that if you have learned a second language, whatever it is, I'm sure you would be, uh, you will learn Arabic language more easily. So, there is nothing to be worried about. The significance and importance of Arabic language is that when you learn this language, you would have a very great and comprehensive access to many texts, many books, and many scriptures in the world which are solely and only written in Arabic. Rather than being able to talk with many Arabic-speaking people, when you learn Arabic, you will be able to read Quran as a very great holy book for Muslims. And very many other holy scriptures like narrations of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, or narrations of great Imams and many other books which have been written in Arabic. It is very important to say that the language that we are going to learn during these series and these classes is the modern standard Arabic. Because Arabic, like many other languages in the world, rather than having a modern standard form, it has also many dialects. For example, we have Hejazi dialect, Shami dialect, Egyptian dialect, Iraqi dialect. We, during these series, are not going to learn the many dialects, though we would point and we would share with you some of few uh, primary points about these dialects. But we are not going to learn, primarily we are not going to learn any dialect. We are going to learn modern standard Arabic, which is called in Arabic Al-Fusha. When you hear from anyone saying that, can you speak Arabic in Fusha? Fusha means the modern standard Arabic. But the dialects are in accordance with different places, places in the world. For example, when you say Hejazi dialect, is it, it is connected with Saudi Arabia. When you say Shami dialect, it is connected with uh, Syria. When you say Iraqi dialect, it is connected and related with Iraq. Therefore, those dialects would require a specific independent series of learning language. After these brief points, 
I would like to, at last, to uh, recommend my dear brothers and sisters to first pay a very good attention to whatever point that is included in the book that you have been given as the main book of this series. And also, during the learning these, uh, this language, during this series, we would, of course, offer you some exercises. That doing these exercises would help you a lot to learn this language in the best way. As you know, the book that we have offered and we, have, we suggest you to uh, learn this language through that is the book called Standard Arabic and Elementary Intermediate Course. So we would follow the procedure that is given in this book. And during this procedure, of course, there are many exercises, there are many uh, points, and the book includes a very comprehensive detail about different aspects of language. And at the last, as the last point, I would recommend as well, my dear brothers and sisters, to note, to have notes. And specifically, I recommend you to write your notes next to the page of the book as a very uh, common tradition in Hausa. Normally, students of Hausa, they write the brief notes next to the text that they are reading. Of course, if you have the PDF file and the digital form of this book, you would be able to write all of your notes inside of your file. That would help you and would enable you to get access to whatever note that you have next to the main detail given in the book. By this last point, and by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we start the series of learning Arabic language following the same procedure in this book. As the first point that I'm going to give and the first step of learning language, I would like to talk about the alphabet. In every language that you're going to learn, of course, you have to know and you have to be aware of the basis of the language. And the base of every language is the alphabet. And as a matter of fact, the alphabet is the first difference between Arabic and English. In Arabic, the whole alphabet includes 29 characters, unlike English, also unlike Farsi and some other languages. You have 29 characters. Every character in Arabic is called harf. Harf means character. And the plural form of harf is Huruf. So, huruf means characters of alphabet. The whole alphabet in Arabic, the equivalent of alphabet in Arabic is al huruf al abjadiya. I repeat it al huruf al abjadiya. So, basically, Al-huruf al-abjadiyya means the characters 
of Arabic alphabet. And as I mentioned, it includes 29 characters. In Arabic language, we have 26 consonant characters. 26 consonant characters. And three vowel characters. So 26 consonants and three vowels. Keep it in your mind because during this lesson, which is lesson one, we are going to deal with these 26 uh, consonants and three vowels in many times. Of course, you know that any, like any other languages, every character has a name and also has a sound. For example, in English, when you uh, want to name the characters, you say A, B, C, D, and etc. When you say B, the word B is the name of this character, this specific character. But the sound of this character is not B. This is the name of it. The sound of this character is B. So the same manner, the same uh, ruling we would have in Arabic. In Arabic, all the 29 characters, they have a specific name and also a sound. We start now by naming the names of every character and then adding the sound of each of them. So, in order to get familiar and start by the most familiar characters, we start by consonants. As we have in the book, the first character in Arabic is called Hamza. Hamza is the name of the first character. But the sound of this character is a. Uh. A uh is the sound of this character which is called Hamza. Let me give you some examples. For example, in English, when you say arm, the sound of the first character of arm is the same sound of Hamza in Arabic. Arm, the first character, sounds like the same Hamza in Arabic. Arm. Or the first sound of the word in. In. The first sound is the same as what we have as Hamza in Arabic. Or the same sound that we have in Ooz. The first sound. Ooz. It is the, the same as the Hamza that we have in Arabic. So, the initial sounds of these three examples that I have given to you are the same Hamza that we have in Arabic. Let's go to the next character. I recommend you to have a look at the book, the page one of lesson one. I'm reading the same table. The second character, Ba. Ba. Ba is the name of this character. So the sound of this character is B. Ba is the name of B. Like B in big. Big. The third, Ta. 
which is the same as T in English. When you say T. Fourth, THA. Also, we have the similar form, the similar sound in English. Three. THA is the name of the same sound which you hear as the initial sound in three. So the sound of this character is th. th. This is the sound of this character. The other character is jim. Jim is the name of sound j. The same we have in English, gentle. The other character is Kha. Of course, you might not be much familiar with this sound in English. In standard, modern standard English, in the American English or Brit British English or even Australian English, we do not have such sound. But in Scottish English, we have like lach in Scottish English. So the word kha, kha is the name of this sound. The other character is dal, dal. Dal is the name of the sound d, d like door. Or the other character is dal, dal. The name of the sound th, th. Like what we have in th. The article in English, it sounds the same. Th in English. Or those, that. This is the same dal that we have in Arabic. The other is ra, ra. Almost the same sound is used in English with a very slight difference. In English, when you want to use, when you say room, room, it has a very smooth sound, room. But in Scottish English, when you say room, room, you see, it is different from normal English that we have room. In Scottish English, we say room, room. This, the initial sound, room, this is the same as what we have in Arabic as Ra. Ra is the name of sound R. R. The other character is Zai. Zai. This is the name of sound Z. Like zero. Zero. Also, we have another as an, another character, seen. Seen. Seen is the name of sound s. Like we have sun in English. Sun. The other character is sheen, the name of sh. Like we have in English, sure. Sure. The other character is fa. Fa. The sound is f. f. This is the sound of it. Like we have in English, fog. Fog. The other character is cough. Cough. Cough is the same sound of the name of the sound k, k, 
like we have what we have in English, key, key. The next character is lam, 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 as the name of sound l, like what we have in English, live, or lock. The other character is meme. Meme is the name of the sound m, like what we have in English, monkey or money. The next character, noon. Noon is the name of n, like what we have in English, noon. Another character is ha, ha, ha is the name of sound h, h, like hot in English, hot. Another character is wow, wow, wow is the name of w. The English example, wall. And the last one, ya. Ya. Ya is the name of y. The English example, year. Year. These are the familiar consonants in Arabic that the almost equivalent of them are found in English language. But there are three vowels, as we mentioned recently. The three vowels in Arabic are, the first one, a, uh, a. Uh. This is the sound of alif. Alif is the name of this vowel. Alif is the name of this vowel. And the sound of this vowel is ah, uh, like far in English. The other vowel in Arabic is e. The name is ya. If you remember, we had another consonant in we have a, we had a consonant also in the previous table with the same name ya. So ya is the name of both consonant y and vowel e. Both are called ya. But but the first one is consonant and the second one is vowel. Like dear dear. And the last vowel is u. Again, the name of this vowel is the same name that we had for w. What was the name? If you remember, the name was wow. So the name wow is the name of two characters. One consonant, w, and one vowel. Both are called wow. Like school, the sound school. So these are the vowels. Also, you would confirm that the vowels also were familiar for English speakers, as we had the English examples. But now it's time to come to some of unfamiliar consonants in Arabic. The unfamiliar consonants in Arabic requires more attention. And the pronunciation of these consonants are totally different from the con pronunciation that we normally have in English or any other languages. For example, 
The first one is ha ha. You would confirm that this ha is different from the consonant that we have recently learned as ha. That was a familiar consonant like what we have in English, like hot. But in Arabic, there is another consonant which is called ha. The difference is that this character is pronounced in pharynx. It is articulated in pharynx with air friction, like this. So it is articulated in pharynx. So it is called ha, ha. For example, in when you pray in Arabic, you say alhamdu, alhamdu. This is the first character is ha. The second unfamiliar consonant is ain ain we don't have such thing in english ain this is also is articulated in pharynx with air friction ain like what you say in arabic al ilm ilm so Ain is the name of the sound A. Like Ha was the sound was the name of sound H. So these are two unfamiliar consonants. The next one is Rain. Rain. Rain is the name of R. Let me give you a familiar example. Have you noticed the some of the French people when when they uh, speak in their language and they want to pronounce the word Paris? Do you remember how they pronounce it? They say Paris. Paris. Instead of Paris, they pronounce the character R like rain in Arabic. Instead of saying Paris, they say Paris. Paris. This sound R is the same rain that we have in Arabic. So that would be a very good clue for you to. Uh, Remember and keep this in your mind to learn how to pronounce R or Rain. Rain is the name of the sound R. The other character, Sad. Sad. This is the same S in English, but it is articulated with much emphasis instead of saying sod you emphasize it stronger sod sod as if you have put something in your mouth and you pronounce it sod 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 is the name of sound s s like Again, when you pray, rec reciting the chapter Tawheed, you say, Allahu Samad, Samad. The initial character in Samad is Saad. The other character is Baad, Baad, Baad. This is the Exactly the same character that I mentioned at the beginning of my uh, talk as a specific character for Arabic, which any other, no other languages contain and include it. 
That's why I mentioned that Arabic is called as the second name Lughatul Lad, the, lang the language of Lad. Lad is another character, unfamiliar character in Arabic, which is consonant. Lad is the name of sound L. It is also the same Dal, the same D in English, which is articulated with more emphasis. Another character is Ta. Ta. Ta is again the same sound T in English with emphasis. Ta. Ta. Like Tahir. Like Tahara. So the name Ta is the name of the sound T. Another is the. Do you remember the sound the, which was this, which had the same pronunciation as the article in English had, or those that the, the same sound when it is articulated and pronounced with much more emphasis, it turns to law, law. Again, imagine that you have filled, you have filled your mouth with something. Law, law. And the last character is Qaf. Qaf. Qaf, it is pronounced like K in English, but with much more emphasis. Qaf. Qaf. Again, this is pronounced in your pharynx. Notice this, this is very significant and important. These are all of the consonants and vowels of Arabic language. Inshallah, if God wills, in the next episode and next session, we will continue with how to write these consonants and vowels and these alphabets. Thank you very much. See you next time. والحمد لله رب العالمين. صل على محمد وآل محمد. اللهم.